Hello and welcome to the second part of this BEX EDM series on how you can build your own custom wire EDM machine. So today I'm going to uh, talk about the subsystems uh, that make up a wire EDM system and I'm going to discuss the interfaces between these subsystems. So I will not go into detail into what is exactly inside these subsystems um, but I will rather give a global overview instead. Uh, the detail of these subsystems will be covered by separate videos later in this series. So, uh, let's get to it. Okay, here's the overview. I'll first discuss this schematic view, and then I'll show each subsystem briefly on video. So, in this schematic, each blue block is a subsystem, and the black arrows indicate the interfaces between them. So, let's start on the left. Here's uh, the user. The user interfaces to the PC through a keyboard, mouse and monitor. The keyboard and mouse need to be uh, wireless 2.4 GHz to prevent USB EMC issues. So EMC is quite a big topic. Um, so I'll do a dedicated video on EMC later in this series. The PC is connected to the CNC controller by USB. Uh, that's this cable here. Uh, this USB needs to be really short again to prevent EMC problems. Um, in order to get it as short as possible, my advice is to have the PC and the controller um, in the same shielded enclosure. So the CNC controller connects to the peripheral box through an optically isolated cable. The optical isolation is on the control side. Uh, the peripheral box is the subsystem that contains the electronics to drive and read the peripherals. Uh, so, for example, the motor drives for the CNC motors, the motor drives for the wire motors, uh, solid state relays for switching the pumps in the water system, uh, readout of limit switches in the CNC mechanics, readout of uh, a wire brake detection. Um, the generator on-off commands, uh, the generator edge detection mode command, and yeah, also the generator edge detection signal. So the peripheral box here, it uh, connects to the CNC mechanics only through the CNC motor cables and limit switches. Uh, CMC, the CNC mechanics subsystem speaks for itself. It has all the required mechanics in order to uh, CNC guide the wire through the workpiece. Uh, the CAD model uh, is available on BEX-EDM.com and note that this CAD model is only provided as a design guide to make your own machine design. As my design is only the second uh, iteration and there is always some room for improvement. I'll discuss this at a later moment. So the arc generator it's a subsystem that creates uh, the sparking action for cutting. Uh, it's available in the webshop of backcdm.com and the arc generator uh, connects to the mechanics uh, through a twisted pair Litsa power cable and through a twisted pair uh, sense wire. It's also connected, uh, as you can see here, to the PC via a USB RS485 converter cable. And this is used to uh, configure the arc generator uh, using the PC. Next to that, the generator is also connected to the uh, peripheral box um, for the on-off signal and the edge detection signals. So the water system uh, contains everything that is needed to flush the workpiece and to keep the water clean. Uh, to deionize the water and also to keep the water at the right temperature. So some examples of what this system includes is the, the water tank, the pumps, the valves, several particle filters, uh, a deionization filter, water level monitoring and a water connectivity sensor. So the water system only interfaces to the CNC mechanics uh, through two hoses one for the upper flushing head and one for the lower. The water system also interfaces to the peripheral box, as you can see, uh, such that through the peripheral box, the CNC controller can control the pumps and monitor the water levels. Lastly, 
the EDM wire handling subsystem. So this contains all required functions to reel off new wire from a spool, tension it, transport it through the sea arc at the right speed, and re-reel or discard the spent wire. It interfaces only to the CNC mechanics uh, uh, mechanically, and the interface to the peripheral box here uh, consists of power for the wire speed motor, power for the wire tensioning motor, and the wire brake detection signal. Okay, that's it uh, for this schematic overview. Now let's look at some uh, video footage of my setup. So the first part of the subsystem is uh, the user interface and it's uh, really simple. It's a standard monitor um, and wireless keyboard and mouse to uh, prevent disturbances uh, on uh, the USB cables. One thing to note is that the, um, the monitor should be connected to uh, the PC using a 4K compatible HDMI cable, even though you will not be even using 4K. But 4K HDMI cables are better shielded than the standard cables, so uh, keep that in mind. Okay, this is uh, more interesting. This uh, cabinet here contains my uh, PC and as, as well as my uh, motion control uh, system. One thing to note here <coughs> is that this cabinet also contains uh, the drivers for my stepper motors. Um, as I explained in the schematic, it's better to have those drivers in the peripheral box. But um, yeah, this is my first design. I put the drivers in here, it's working fine, but uh, I would advise them to put them in the peripheral box. Okay, so on top here, I have the uh, antenna for the wireless keyboard and mouse. Um, next to it, I have a feedback cable for the uh, generator. It provides the uh, uh, speed signal for closing the control loop for the wire feed speed. Then here I have a 24, 25 pole connector that goes to my peripheral box that uh, includes yeah, basically all the things I explained before to, uh, to control those. And here are two uh, connectors, one for X and one for Y for my step drivers. So let's have a look inside the box. I salvaged this box from a scrapyard and repainted it. Okay, let me zoom in a bit. So in the bottom we have a Dynamotion K-flop CNC controller. That's the small card on top. And below that there is the uh, analog expansion card of Dynamotion, which, which gives you a lot of uh, I.O. option. What you cannot see here is that uh, below the analog big board uh, there is a mini PC. It's an Intel NUC and UC computer. Really small palm top sized thing that I placed inside this cabinet for the computer control. Then on top here are uh, two 48 volt power supplies. Um, don't know the exact power by heart, but I will cover this whole cabinet in bigger detail in a later video. Um, and on top of that there are two stepper drivers. And you can also see a mains input filter on the left. And here you can see the connectors. So that's the PC and uh, CNC control subsystem. Okay, the mechanics also a subsystem. So you've probably seen it already in some videos. Uh, may have even downloaded the complete CAD design file for it already. But anyway, I'm going to show it to you now. Um, just an overview. Uh, there are a lot of small details on it, which I will all explain, but not at this moment. Uh, okay, so here are my mechanics. So what's it all about? We have a steel frame. Very sturdy and stiff at the bottom, uh, it's thick welded. And then we have uh, the X and Y axis stacked on top of each other um, with the playlist spindles. So uh, what's it called, ball screw spindles. 
Um, normal step, stepper motors, nothing special. NEMA 23, one newton meter motors um, with these couplings here. Um, so I stack them on top of each other and I can unscrew uh, the bottom one from the, or the top one from the bottom one to align the squareness of the uh, two axes. The whole mach machine rests on little feet so that I uh, can set it such that it's completely level. Then here's the water tank. So, made of plexiglass. Um, here's the uh, workpiece table, made of stainless steel. So you might have uh, heard me say the word sea arc for a few times. Uh, this is what I mean by sea arc. So this whole piece with this opening here where the wire normally runs through, that's the uh, that's the sea arc. So uh, the sea arc is connected to the x-axis. And we have uh, the wire mechanism. So uh, there's uh, one motor that controls the tension. There is another motor that controls the speed. Um, the wire is not on at the moment. I was exchanging a workpiece. Normally the wire runs here. And then there's a switch. So when the wire breaks, the machine stops. Um, so I can adjust the height between the top and bottom uh, uh, flush, what, what are these called, flushing nozzles. So I can adjust the height and set the nozzle to the correct uh, workpiece height. Um, a lot of fancy mechanics over here, uh, but you don't actually, actually need that. Um, I will uh, explain that in a later video. I started out with a closed loop control for the uh, uh, torque in this motor, but eventually settled for a different solution. It's still here, but it's not working anymore. Also, these motors have encoders. Don't use them anymore. I also had a lot of problems with EMC. That's why all the copper tape is here. Okay, um, so that's the overview, the short overview of the mechanics. So next subsystem is the arc generator. It's basically a box um, with some connectors on the back. Um, so you, you can buy it as a finished part. Uh, it needs to be uh, mounted such that it has uh, some free space above and below as well. Uh, it needs to breathe, otherwise it can overheat. Um, and the uh, arc generator is uh, connected to the machine uh, with these cables here. So this is a twisted pair of Litzer cable that's connected to the generator and here's a sense cable. And there's also yeah, the cables in the back. Let me see here. And this cable and this cable. These run to the uh, peripheral box and to my uh, control box. Okay, in the back I have uh, the wire feed mechanism, at least part of it. So you can see that there is a new spool of wire and there is a second spool uh, which uh, re reels the uh, spent wire. There's also a little servo motor here um, that can swing back and forth for uh, evenly distributing the uh, re reeled wire. I used that in the beginning, uh, but now I decided yeah, you, you don't actually need it. Um, it's making things overly complex. Instead, what I did was to make this wire spool. Uh, I basically cut it in half. So it's uh, it, it now consists of two parts. So when it's, when it's starting to get full here, I just unmount the spool, take the spool apart, and then I can take off the uh, the wire easily. And then uh, yeah, the wire is uh, recycled. Uh, uh, not used again, but I bring it to the recycling company and then I still get some money for it. Okay, so in the back here, there is a small motor. That, uh, that's the re-reeling motor. And the feeding reel uh, that has a, a friction drum on it. 
with a suitable uh, friction. Really simple. Then the feed wires, they go through these Teflon tubes. No, it's Teflon. If you use anything else, it won't work. Teflon tubes and the tubes take the wire to the feed mechanism here. So that's the overview of the wire mechanism. So here's an overview of my water system. I'm going to use this, uh, this laser pointer here to, uh, to point things out. So it's, uh, it's a bit messy at this moment. Um, initially, I had this cart. Uh, so this is a TIG welded frame. And um, I had the water system fully integrated on this single frame so I could move, move it around. Um, and then it turned out that the pumps that I was using, uh, which were salvaged, salvaged from dishwashers, they were not strong enough. So I needed to buy new pumps. So there's one big pump here in the back uh, that delivers the pressure to the sea arc. There's one smaller pump over here, this one, and that uh, sucks in the dirty water and presses it through these filters here. So the new pumps, of course, uh, they did not fit into my custom TIG welded frame. So basically I have to redo the complete frame to integrate everything again. And uh, time is always a problem. So still on my to-do list. So the, d uh, the dirty water pump um, pushes the water through uh, this fir first filter here. Custom casing. It, it uh, uses this uh, uh, industrial EDM water filter. Then I have uh, two normal water filters for drinking water. This one here is five micrometers and this one here is one micrometer. And then this last thing here, that's the deionization filter. I also built a custom case only to discover after I finished it that uh, you can buy these things off the shelf. So um, in the back here, there is a 100 liter water tank. Um, it's a tank that's used for uh, camper vans for the toilet. So <laughs> nice different purpose for it at this moment. And on top here, there is a tank. That's the first filter stage. Uh, basically the water has a very low uh, running speed in the tank and the, the heavy particles settle in, uh, in the sponge material that's on the bottom here. There's also uh, on this side here, um, a big water chiller. Um, I discovered that when I use really high pressures and machine for a very long time, that the water gets uh, gets warm. Um, if you use lower pressures, uh, you can do without. But if you're going to use really high pressures, you need uh, you need the water chiller. I will dedicate a separate video on this um, with some calculations to show how much uh, energy is going into the water because of all the pumping. And then you can clearly see that uh, for high pressures, you need uh, really need a chiller. Okay, that's the overview of the water system. So that's it for part two um, of the uh, series on how to make your own custom EDM machine. I hope you have enjoyed it. Um, I kept it really uh, high level to give a global overview, so not much detail, uh, because I will be making a lot of other movies that really zoom into the details that you need to know. This, is, this, was, this was just a general overview. Um, so stay tuned to this channel for lots of more videos. See you next time.